A few days ago, Ken Ham released a short video about his upcoming debate with Bill Nye. It's unlisted, so not many on YouTube will be able to see it, but he did embed it on his own website, Answers in Genesis. He says a few things I'd like to respond to, and I'd also like to share a few thoughts about the whole concept of debating science. Take it away, Mr. Ham. Hi, I'm Ken Ham, President and CEO of Answers in Genesis and the Creation Museum. Hi, I'm Finlag, President and CEO of my very own YouTube channel. As many of you know, Bill Nye has agreed to debate me here at the Creation Museum on February 4th, 2014. Okay, that should be interesting. I'm not sure why you call your theme park a museum, though. It's really been amazing to me that as soon as many of the atheists heard that this debate was going ahead, they were pressuring Bill Nye to pull out of the debate. Uh, many were saying that don't debate creationists because it just legitimizes their worldview or it gives them a platform. They have a point, but I for one do want to see this event go ahead. The thing is that what you call creation science is not recognized by the scientific community. You know, all of the best universities on the planet, such as Harvard, MIT, Cambridge, UC Berkeley, Stanford, Yale, Oxford, Princeton, and so on. Why don't these places teach creation science, Mr. Ham? Why do none of them have a creation science department? Can I suggest that it's because science becomes pseudoscience if you attach words like creation to it? Science is humanity's best method for figuring out how things work. It has to be objective. In other words, if you only study the world through a biblical lens, you're no longer being objective. According to the Statement of Faith on the Answers in Genesis website, the scientific aspects of creation are important but are secondary in importance to the proclamation of the Gospel of Jesus Christ as Sovereign, Creator, Redeemer and Judge. Please note the word secondary. This means that if there is a conflict such as the Bible claiming that Samson had superhuman strength so long as he didn't have a haircut, and then a scientist comes along and says, I'm not so sure about that, or the notion that a human being can survive for three days inside the belly of a fish. Then, according to answers in Genesis, the scientist must be wrong. The 66 books of the Bible are the written word of God. The Bible is divinely inspired and inerrant throughout. I'm not so sure that is true. Where, Mr. Ham, in the Bible, does it say that God's word will be limited to 66 books only? How come Jude, Jesus and James recognized the book of Enoch as scripture, but the Protestant canon, which you endorse, does not? How does this in any way resemble an inerrant book? Its authority is not limited to spiritual, religious or redemptive themes, but includes its assertions in such fields as history and science. Once again, we are told by humans, such as Mr. Ham, that the Bible was created or inspired by something more than human. I don't have faith in you, Mr. Ham, and I don't think it's sensible for you to put all of your faith in one particular book especially when it contains material which contradicts what we know about how the world works. People like Ken Ham, Ray Comfort and Eric Hovind make a big thing about how biblical authority trumps everything else. I think reality should come first. I think we should look at the Bible through the lens of reality, not the other way around. Now, back to you, Mr. Ham. You see, many of these atheists just do not want creationists being able to get their message across. They want to stop people hearing about creation. In fact, they really are involved in censorship. They don't want young people to know that science actually supports the Bible and confirms the Bible's history. First of all, Mr. Ham, you seem to be suggesting that atheists and people who accept evolution are one and the same thing. I hope that during the debate, Bill Nye mentions the fact that Francis Collins, former head of the Human Genome Project and the founder of Biologos.org, is a world-renowned scientist and a devout Christian. There are millions of Christians who fully support the scientific findings regarding the age of the universe and evolutionary theory. 
I think that Ken Ham's audience need to know this, and I know that many of his supporters don't. They seem to buy into the idea that accepting the validity of evolution makes you an atheist. This is simply not true. One of the most committed Christians I know on YouTube is a guy called Trustin JC. He accepts the science and regards young earth creationists as teaching a dangerous and false doctrine. As for the idea that atheists want to censor creationists, sure, some of them might, but one of the strongest criticisms we have is that you, Mr. Ham, want to bring your religion to the science classroom. Like I said before, science needs to be objective. By all means, preach your religion, but be honest with the children and do it in the religion class or church. And make it clear that what you're teaching is what you believe, not necessarily what you know. The other thing that I saw happen was this. There were atheists uh, that were actually telling us that Bill Nye wasn't really an evolutionist to debate Ken Ham. In other words, he wasn't qualified to debate. Once again, Mr. Ham, you seem to be assuming that atheists and people who accept evolution are one and the same. While most atheists do accept evolution, it's not a requirement of atheism. All you need to have to be an atheist is doubt. Doubt that the claims made by believers about their gods are true. That's all there is to it. Bill Nye may not know as much about evolution as Richard Dawkins or Ken Miller, but I'm confident that he knows more than enough to see through the false beliefs of young earth creationism. Incidentally, Ken Miller is another committed Christian. You know, it's all right for Bill Nye to be able to make statements about evolution publicly and be applauded for that, and yet then when he wants to debate a creationist, he's told by uh, secular peers that he shouldn't be debating them because he doesn't really understand evolution. It's just amazing to see the things that have been said. But I encourage you to watch the debate, and you can watch it live at the Answers in Genesis website. So I encourage you to go to answersingenesis.org and you'll be able to find out how to watch the debate between Bill Nye the Science Guy and myself, February 4th, 2014. One of the things about us atheists, Mr. Ham, is that we don't pledge any kind of allegiance to the fact that we don't believe gods are real. So while some people might have a problem with Bill Nye and this upcoming debate, I don't. I would like to see more friendly conversations between believers and non-believers, and between young earth creationists and old earth creationists. Also, I don't think that the debate format lends itself very well to this sort of thing. Debates often involve a lot more rhetoric than analysis of reality. They seem to be more about persuasion than trying to figure out what's true. For what it's worth, I see young earth creationism as pseudoscience bolted onto religion, which also incorporates a global conspiracy theory, one in which the mainstream media and education system are deliberately trying to suppress the reality of a 6,000 year old universe. Here's something else to think about. If a person doesn't have much integrity, how easy would it be to sell ideas which people wanted to buy? By attaching a scam to a religion, how much less likely would it be to be subject to public scrutiny? Especially in America. I don't know whether Ken Ham is a crook or a clown. I have my suspicions, but I can't be 100% sure. One more thing. I made a video last summer in which I accused Ken Ham of bearing false witness against Bill Nye and science. He claimed that Bill Nye and the theory of evolution itself want to teach children that God doesn't exist. I've heard him use this argument again since then. As I said before, many devout Christians fully support evolution. To date, no supporters of Ken Ham have tried to argue that he didn't bear false witness. If their religion is true, then this is serious. Ken Ham could very well end up in the lake of fire. On the off chance that Bill Nye sees this, good luck my friend, and try to hook up with Aaron Ra if you get the chance. He knows a thing or two about young earth creationist debating tactics.